So I am going to discuss something about... Anyway, first thank you for coming all of you. And uh, I just wanted to discuss this topic, Srila Prabhupada books, Simple Yet Deep. Because um, many of the devotees, uh, many in India also, they are not reading Prabhupada books. It's happening. Even if people are reading, but uh, there, there are some things which I want to address. And probably by this seminar, the aim of this seminar is to inspire you all to read Prabhupada books with more depth, more clarity, and also appreciate how what Prabhupada has. You all appreciate, but maybe it will be more, more intense when we talk about that. Okay, so... This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita. I think that quotation is being cut, but this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada writes that Prabhupada noted in his books and in his letters that uh, the devotees are not reading his books. He he understood. This is like I think I think Chaitanya Charitamrita came around mid of the movement somewhere. And he noted in his books, uh, and he also expected that all devotees, Krishna conscious movement, must read all the books, specifically Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavatam, Gita, and others. Others include small books, big books, other uh, middle-sized books. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep, and fall down. Enthusiasm goes down. So, Prabhupada has written in his letters, I have one complaint with my devotees, with my devotees that they are not reading books and distributing but not reading and it's important to yeah read for everybody knows it's important but we have to read but how to read that's another question so as I'm giving seminar I'll do two things first is to show you that Prabhupada books are special how they are special I'm going to show you and the second thing is while I'm showing how it is special I'll also comment certain points, give you certain points how to read his books so that we can read his books and and can and can uh, get the jewels from that what Prabhupada is writing all about ok, this is Chaitanya Charitamrita. Prabhupada also notes in his letters his letter to Governing Body Commission GBC, 1976 1976 means it's almost the pinnacle peak of the movement and we all understand a movement established by Prabhupada, Prabhupada notes again in his letters. The problem is that all devotees are not carefully studying the books, is all being fall down or unsteadiness. And we know history of his con all of us that it went up and down. There were problems. And Prabhupada noted the pro- or any problem in his con, whether it's in past it or present or future, it's going to be because of not treating Prabhupada books. Reading Prabhupada books I means I mean in a holistic way all the books and then we can get a picture then we can understand what is the mood and the mission of Srila Prabhupada and what exactly he wanted from us and there are many problems we know now in Iskorn there are coming up many issues and they can be handled if we read Prabhupada books very nicely this letter and there is Prabhupada's expectation from us this is 1972 22nd July to Hamsadud Prabhu Prabhupada said that, okay, now let's concentrate to thoroughly give this knowledge of Krishna consciousness to our devotees from our books, from tapes. Tapes means morning conversations, that was taped, room conversations. So Prabhupada not only wants us to read his books, his small books, his letters, but all conversations, everything, like law books. Not just read them. Prabhupada said, my books are law books for the next 10,000 years. Law books means if somebody wakes you up at night and asks, okay, what is in that letter? You should be able to tell. If somebody wakes you, what's your name? I forgot. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> no problem. But not with Prabhupada books. You have to understand. That every statement of Prabhupada is going to be there for 10,000 years. It's going to change the world. And whatever Prabhupada writes, he, although he was a Bengali, you know, short-heighted, 
and not as scholarly as his god brothers. His god brothers were, were far more scholarly than Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Rajak Sridhar Maharaj, Kesha Pragya Maharaj. But still, he, uh, Prabhupada, was chosen by Krishna. So, so, and if he is chosen by Krishna, and he is, whatever he writes, it is written by, by Krishna, it's not written by Prabhupada. And there has to be something special what is written in the books. Although it might seem simple, but as a disciples, it's our duty to show that it's simple, but it's deep. So Prabhupada said, oh, we have to instruct. Um, okay, so these are the five things I noted, and everybody notes why people don't read Prabhupada books. Uh, some people say Prabhupada books are ABC. Now, this simple, it's basics. And it's there in India at least. Gaudiya Mat, everybody knows Gaudiya Mat. Gaudiya Mat, they blame Iskon movement, Prabhupada books. Prabhupada books are simple, you know. We are going to give you something special. We are going to give you Radha's mellows. So many people left Iskon. Now even they are leaving. Uh, not one person, 100, 200 people are. They're coming and they're going to Radha Kon, to Gaudiya Mat. It's a big problem. It's becoming a big problem. Many devotees are reading Prabhupada books, but many devotees are reading more of other books. Like, uh, uh, what can I say? Krishna, Krishna, Alhat, Komodi, or whatever, you know. All those hi fi books. Well, you can read that. Not a prob- it's not a problem to read Acharya's books. It's not a problem to read Satsundar, but it's not a problem to read uh, Madhav Mahotsav, or it's good. But at the same time, those books should, should not replace Prabhupada books. That's the point. And they're replacing Prabhupada books. And people are getting this understanding that those books have them something special which Prabhupada books do not have. That's a bad thing which is happening. So, uh, some people say Prabhupada books are A, B, C, D and not X, Y, Z. People, many people don't read Prabhupada books because they find their, their Prabhupada is repeating things. No? We all, you know, when we all read Prabhupada books, maybe initially, initial days, okay, what Gita we read, okay, one, two, three times, four times, all purports, chant Hare Krishna, <laughs> all purports, cycle of birth, these old age, all purports, your soul, you're not this body, what else, nothing, seems, it seems that Prabhupada is repeating, it seems, and that's why, then it, it becomes boring, and then Prabhupada, and people say, oh, come on, we can't, we can't read again and again, there's not, there's, there's nothing else in these books or not, this is happening, this is happening. Probably this happened with us also, all of us. Sometimes it doesn't seem... People think Prabhupada books are not systematic. Because Prabhupada was speaking most of the time. He didn't write. So it seems that his books are not systematic. Obviously, Prabhupada books are not point one, two, three, four. He didn't write in this fashion in which course books are written. Uh, but, uh, and, of course, fifth, that's the most common an argument, no time. No time. So, my job is to show you in this seminar that all these all these arguments are wrong. They're absolutely wrong. They're nonsense, actually. People who don't know how to read Prabhupada books, people who don't appreciate Prabhupada, they, they can't understand what Prabhupada has to give. So, or people are not trained how to read. There's a skill to read things. There's a skill, how to read, how to analyze, and how to extract the points from that. So, these are all wrong arguments, that's all. And why I want to give this seminar is because, I'm giving this seminar because I thought, uh, let me tell my history, because I, uh, I read almost all books, whatever is available in India, or maybe uh, all books of all Acharyas. I am not praising myself, but I am telling you, why I am telling you, I will come to this point. Madhva Sampradaya, I, I read all the books, like Madhva's Anubhashya on Vedanta Sutra, and then, and then, and then Tatpare Chandrika, Vyasa Tirtha, and then Mahabharata Tatpare Nirnay, his uh, Jaya Tirtha Stikas on that. Vallabha uh, Sampradaya, I have read Shodash Granth, his commentaries, Vallabha's commentaries, on Vedanta Sutra, Nibhak Sampradaya, Parijat Saurabh, his commentaries on Vedanta Sutra, his books, and Sri Sampradaya, Ramanuja's 
Vidhan Sutra commentary with Vidhar Sangrah and then Sharnagati Gadhyam, Vidhan Deshika's books, Pillai Lokachari books, Kanak Das, Purandar Das. So for that I learned Sanskrit and I learned Kannad because most of the books are in Kannad. For reading Vallabha's books, I learned Gujarati. For reading Nimbarka's books, I learned little so Rajasthani because those books are there in that. And then Gaudiya books. Gaudiya, the, the, we have Gaudiya magazines. Pakti Santa used to publish eight magazines. Eight magazines at his time. One is Gaudiya Patrika. We all know about that. Harmonist. So all those, I read Alan Bengali and read all those books. Everything. But then, all, 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 all our Goswami's books, Jiva Goswami, Shat Sandharva, Rupa Goswami's books, whatever is there. But after reading all those books, I read Prabhupada's books and I found there was no need to read all those books, first of all. <laughs> Why to read all those books? Why to catch nose like this? Prabhupada's books have everything. Absolutely everything. There's no need to... Life is short. We have to perfect our lives. You know. So that's why I was telling my, you know, all this history so that, uh, so that I could make this point, impress you that there's no need to do all those things. It'll waste time. You, you can learn Sanskrit if you want, not a bad deal. But even after learning Sanskrit, you'll not be able to understand commentaries. That, that is a different Sanskrit. That's a Vedic Sanskrit. So school Sanskrit, it'll take you to learn around six years. Vedic Sanskrit, 12 years. And then you read all those books. And then still you have to learn Nyaya, Shiksha, Kalp, Vyakaran, Jyotish. That's a system. And then you understand what's written. And then after understanding, what's the conclusion? Sir Krishna. <laughs> what's, what's the point, you know? What's the point of going like this? There's no point. So people can do that if there's some project, but there's no need. No need. So that's something I was telling my past. Why? Because it is relevant to this seminar to help you understand that I have done all those things and when I came back again to Prabhupada books, I found that Prabhupada, Prabhupada knew what is writing. Every statement of Prabhupada is, is summarizing all sampradayas. All sampradayas. He knows what he's doing and I'm sh I'll show you how, how he does in his books. So I'm going to argue, anti-argue to all these arguments and show to you that these are all wrong. Okay. First, Prabhupada books are not A, B, C, D. Prabhupada books have everything. From A, B, C to X, Y, Z. This is 1974, February 1st. This is a letter by Prabhupada. Prabhupada himself says, I have given all guidance and hence, it is described in all my books, guidance regarding principles and the process of devotion, hints regarding management and the practical concerns. He's given everything. And now it is up to you. Please keep up principles firmly and everything will come out successful. Prabhupada is claiming, let me put it like this, that my books have everything. So when Prabhupada says that, he can't be wrong. Somebody can argue for this. Well, Prabhupada, this, this, uh, this is a letter to somebody. Somebody can argue, well, Prabhupada is writing to his foreigner disciples to encourage them that, you know, my books have, I've given you everything, no? But, he was simply encouraging them to serve Krishna. That's what Gaudiya Mat people said. He simply said to his disciples so that they can get encouraged otherwise because they don't know how to read Sanskrit and all this and they get depressed. So they argue for like that. So that's wrong. Uh, Prabhupada didn't cheat us, first of all. Whatever he's writing, that's supposed to be um, golden words. He can't, it can't change. And I'll show you how Prabhupada is showing in his books. Prabhupada is saying, May 28, 1970, this is 1977 letter, Vrindavan. Prabhupada says, My purport is liked by people because they are presented as practical experience. Now, why devotees who read Prabhupada's books, other, other, other people who read, and they blame to Prabhupada's books that they don't have everything, because they are simply theoretical boxes, that's all. They are theoretical. Gaudiya Math and all these people, Radha Kunva Bhaji, they're all theoretical. Prabhupada is writing from a practical experience. Prabhupada says they are not ordinary. One cannot become unless one is very realized. It is not A, B, C, D translation. Okay. How does Prabhupada books have everything? Let's see. 
You can shift it. Okay. Yeah, you can shift it forward. Sit. You can sit properly. That's okay. Okay. This is we have we have four sampradays. We all know Ramanuja Vallabh, Nimark, Madhva. And this is letter in 1976, January, Bombay. Prabhupada writes a statement, service is a reward of service. If you read all books of Ramanuja Sampradaya, this is the conclusion. We, have a, we had a Sri Vaishnav here. He went. <laughs> he's there? <laughs> oh, he just left. He could have told. Service is a reward of service. This is a statement made by Ramanuja. When at last office, when he was ending his past times, and Prabhupada writes in his letter, Prabhupada writes in his letter. So even if you don't read whole Sri Sampradaya, and if you take this one statement, then you can realize this. This is you have got Sri Sampradaya. That's all. Finish. You don't need to read all books. That's all. Simple one statement. Service is reward of service. It's a very deep statement. We can talk on this three four hours. We can continue talking, but that's not my agenda now to discuss this. But so beautiful statement services this is shri sampradaya okay this is valavachare this is bhagavatam first canto it's cutting bhagavatam first canto 16 chapter 26th verse uh, prabhupada writes in bhagavatam purport the lord feels grateful to his devotees for such unsophisticated unconditional service and tries to reciprocate it by rendering service krishna is feeling grateful for the service of his devotees and he is serving his devotees now Although the devotee also has no such desires in his heart, this is the conclusion of Vallabh Sampradaya. Vallabh Sampradaya is Pushti Mark. That's the path of mercy. And Vallabh Acharya has just this one thing to say: that Krishna, when he does mercy, he is thinking he is serving his devotees. Why he serves his devotees? Because devotees serve him. There is a sustained reciprocal uh, relationship in love. Lord serves the devotees. Devotee serves the Lord. When devotee sees the Lord serving him, their enthusiasm to serve increases. When when Krishna sees devotees serving him, his enthusiasm to serve them increases. So there's a competition between Krishna and his devotees. That's the point. Prabhupada writes in Chaitanya Charitam. There's a competition. Krishna serves his devotees, and devotees serve Krishna. Who wins? What do you say? Who will win in this competition? <laughs> Who wins? Krishna or devotees? Both are winners. Both are winners. Yeah, maybe win-win situation. <laughs> It doesn't end. The game doesn't end. Then we can talk of win and loss. No, the game doesn't end. It continues. So there's no winning, no loss, no defeat. It keeps on going. This is Vallabh Sampradaya. Okay. Who is this? Can anybody tell me? Yeah, Madhva Sampradaya. Madhva has two fingers. You see that two fingers, like this, and Madhva's philosophy is dualism, duet. And Madhva said, "You see, by two fingers, I am not telling you that there is soul and super soul. I don't want to tell this. This is common sense." <laughs> he said, "I am not going to tell." And any Mayavadi used to come, and he used to tell soul and super soul in one. Uh, he used to tell, he used to tell, just give him prasad, you know. <laughs> This is common sense. Come on, super soul. I don't want to argue for that. <laughs> He just dismissed in one statement entire Maya Vat. You know, it's not nonsense. He he put two fingers to help us understand. Soul is dependent. Super soul is independent. That's what his philosophy is. And that's Prabhupada saying Bhagavad Gita seven chapter twenty second verse. Who demigods living entity are dependent on the supreme will. They are not independent. Krishna's will is independent. Our will, our actions are dependent. That's in one line Madhva's philosophy. So, and this is Nim, uh, this is who is this? Oh, uh, no, anyway, name is <laughs> Nimbar Kachare, and he he says this is Prabhupada quoting Elevation to Krishna Consciousness, Chapter One. This is a small book. Everybody knows this, no? Elevation to Krishna Consciousness. Now, uh, I quoted from this book to impress you that small books are not small. They are not small. Elevation to Krishna consciousness. If you have read, all of you have read. It is like from service to Mahabhav. It is like going to that level. You know, Prabhupada is writing everything: mood of separation and whatever technical words you can use, prem, bhajitte, and all those things. Prabhupada is explaining that it's a very deep book. So, uh, I think we should read small books and understand what Prabhupada is quoting here. 
पार्ट ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल प्लेजर एक्सपीरियंस इन वैकुंठा दिस वैकुंठा इज द प्लेजर ऑफ डांसिंग दे आर ऑल्सो यंग गर्ल्स एंड यंग बॉयज देर दिस इज द समेशन ऑफ निम्बाक संप्रदाय दे इज द मोस्ट कॉमन बुक फॉर निम्बाकाचार्य द मोस्ट फेमस बुक ऑफ निम्बाक संप्रदाय इज महावाणी this they 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 are their book just like we have chaitanya charitamrita mahavani the whole sampradaya's philosophy is based on this statement young boys and young girls having spiritual pleasure that's what their focus is uh we chant hari krishna they chant radhe shyam radhe shyam 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 radhe radhe you heard this they they chant that so it's it is more of uh, they more in uh, rasa and mellows their whole sampradaya goes in that this number of sampradaya so and this is in small book chapter 1 so all sampradayas are there in prabhupad books you don't need to read there some conclusion is there simply have to understand there is so much rasa in prabhupad books people say prabhupad books are boring but prabhupad books have mellows this is letter to hamsadut prabhu i i didn't write the year anyway prabhupad says our philosophy is above all things just like we prescribe our students no illicit sex no meditating no intoxication no gambling but they are not ends in themselves because all what gaudiya math has to blame is con is yeah you people chant 16 rounds and four regulatory principles you don't know anything more than that people say that if you have heard about it but prabhupada is mentioning real end is how to serve and sacrifice everything for him and this statement is very important because this statement is gopis are all about this statement no the word gopi comes from the word gopniye gopniye you listen what's gopniye gopniye means secret so gopis have a secret and what's that secret that secret is this their whole life is based on service and sacrifice not just service service is not everything it has to be coupled with sacrifice then it becomes complete and that is what is gopis that is what is vrindavan so there's lot of mellows we we uh, we love this statement no service and sacrifice purity and mercy that's what is all about spirituality no there's a lot of mellows but the point is person has to appreciate this to understand there's a mellow in this you have to appreciate we that's why prabhupada said my books are from practical experience people who are serving people who are sacrificing they can relate yes yes this is pleasure this is ecstasy we want to die for krishna this is ecstasy that's good so there is rasa this deep philosophy oh, oh. anyway forget the quotation it's from one of the prabhupad books oh this is from bhagavatam and if you read this the prabhupad books have deep philosophy and what prabhupad is saying let's read this prabhupad says in bhagavatam purport even if the lord is approached by someone with devotion to intensify devotee's love the lord may not immediately reciprocate fully in fact the lord is truly reciprocating after all a sincere devotee always pray to the lord please help me to love you purely if you pray to krishna please help me to love you purely purely what krishna will do therefore the lord so called neglect is actually fulfillment of lord's prayer if you tell krishna i want to meet you he will not meet you that's all and so what do you do what do you mean krishna and that's what krishna wants lord krishna intensifies our love for him by apparently separating himself from us and the result is that we achieve what we really wanted and prayed for intense love for absolute truth this is a very deep philosophy very deep philosophy you pray to krishna but he doesn't come he separates himself from us just to intensify our love isn't it deep it's not simple it's very deep so prabhupad books have deep philosophy i can write this in sanskrit same thing same thing can be written in sanskrit in shat sandarbhas and then you learn sanskrit for 12 years and then you translate it into english and you end up in this what's the point you know what's the point why do you want to do that simple if you can do that's well and good that's bonus but no need no need so this is all prabhupada this is bhagavatam purport very nice okay so that's prabhupada books have everything Uh, so next is prabhupad books do not repeat there is no repetition is prabhupad books the mood is deep it seems prabhupad books are repeating but prabhupad books doesn't repeat for example how many times you have heard birth that is his old age in prabhupad books 
Is it so many times, no? It seems Prabhupada is repeating, but that is old age, but that is old age, but that is old age, that's all. <laughs> but it's not like that. For example, you see this, uh, this is from Bhagavad Gita, 7 chapter, 20th verse. I don't know why it's overlapping, but this is the verse, that's the purport. That's the purport. And Prabhupada writes in the purport, birth that this old age affect this material body. Anything unusual in this statement? But that this old age affect this material body. We have read thousands of times. Prabhupada is repeating, no. You have to see the context when you are reading. The context, that's very important. This line is coming in the context of this verse. And the verse is, Intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service. Now if you read this statement, intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death, they take refuge in me. Now Krishna is saying this and Prabhupada explains in perfect. Why Krishna says intelligent person? Because devotees are intelligent. They know that if they do devotion to Krishna, if they go back to Krishna, they automatically get released from cycle of birth, that is old age. They don't have to separately endeavor to get release of cycle of birth, that is old age. If you get a spiritual body, you go back to spiritual world, associate with Krishna, your problem of birth that is old age is solved. You understand? That's why Prabhupada explains in purport. But this old age affects material body, not spiritual body. He is bringing the concept of spiritual body to help us understand devotees are intelligent. They aim for spiritual body and not for liberation. If you get spiritual body, you are automatically liberated. That's all. So you see, when you put this statement in context, then you can understand why Prabhupada is writing for this old age. It's not the same everywhere. Are you, are you getting my point? I, I don't know. Yes or no? I'm happy speaking French. <laughs> I, don't so. I don't know. Okay. Uh, this is one statement from Prabhupada's books. That's Krishna. This font is missing. Prabhupada says in Brahm Samhita it is said Krishna is the supreme controller. How many times you have read Krishna supreme controller? So, I mean, it's so lakhs of times in Prabhupada. Prabhupada is, no, Prabhupada is not repeating. You have to see the context. This statement comes in this context. Oh, wait. This is a verse. Which is this verse? Can you? Uh, this quotation is not coming. Fools deride me when I descend in human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as supreme lord of all that be. This is a verse from Bhagavad Gita. What is that Sanskrit for that? Abhajananti maam moda manushim tanumashritam param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram. So Krishna says, fools deride me when I come in human form. They do not know my transcendental nature. Now, if you read this verse and you put the purport in context, when Prabhupada says Krishna is supreme controller, Prabhupada is writing with the with explanation to this verse. And Prabhupada is helping us understand, even though Krishna is supreme controller, he comes as human form and he likes to be controlled. You see? You see that point? He descends as human form. Human form, he is controlled in Vrindavan. And that's where Prabhupada raises his point. He's supreme control. There are many controllers, but he's supreme controller. The idea is to impress you that although he's supreme controller, controllers of controllers, yet gopis control him. And that's the transcendental nature which people can't understand. You see, if you put in context, we get other insights. If you don't put it in context, Krishna is supreme controller. Okay, fine. I've heard it. Go on. No, so that's one tip to read Prabhupada books. Please keep context. Otherwise, you will feel Prabhupada is repeating. And next tip is what I told you uh, previously. Uh, Prabhupada books have everything. That small books are not small. Keep this in mind. Small books can help understand Bhagavatam. Prabhupada is writing his realization in small books. In other big books, Prabhupada is writing purports to that verse. But small books he is dictating. And he's in free flow. You understand? He's in free flow. He's just writing his realizations. That's why sometimes small books are more special than big books. They have their own place. They have their own place. Okay, and this is from Bhagavad Gita 7.1. Okay, this is a statement from 7.1, 7 chapter, first verse. 
Krishnapad writes con- this purport for concentration of mind upon krishna the supreme is made possible by prescribed devotional service in nine different forms simple we have read so many times babaji is repeating no when you read prabhupad books please read fully focus on minor details prabhupad writes next continuing the statement of which shravanam is the first and most important how many of us thought that kirtanam is the most important we all thought no prabhupada doesn't say prabhupada says shravanam is most important if you go to folio put a hit which is you put kirtanam is most important no hit you put shravanam is most important hits will come now we never thought about that we didn't focus on that prabhupada this is bhagavad gita shravanam is more important than kirtanam prabhupada said the most important that's why hearing is the most important which will which will help us to enter the stage of kirtanam which will help us to appreciate kirtanam otherwise we can't appreciate it's not possible so please keep a focus on minor details prabhupada because generally it happens you know we read first and then okay bro is repeating and we miss the important point uh, it's, it's things are coming same so third tip is please keep focus on minor details okay this is a quiz for you this is from krishna book and prabhupada writes this gopis are speaking to krishna prabhupada writes gopis are saying to krishna we are simply your maid servants and slaves please therefore accept us by showing your beautiful lotus like face is there anything special in this statement that's okay anything special slaves good yeah slaves yeah that's special so what do you mean by that what why is writing slaves yeah you got it but why why slaves it sounds kind of extreme hmm it sounds like at least in america it seems ex- extreme <laughs> in america it seems extreme like puppets, like yeah okay like yeah so this is insight of prabhupad it's not just service it's becoming slaves now what do you mean by slaves here ramanuja chare madhva chare they 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 gave concept of service and servant but mahaprabhu went beyond it he gave a concept of slave slave means if you do service you get something no that service even if you don't do you do service okay finish what is a slave you do service and you get beatings no <laughs> there's a slave <laughs> it's a different thing. you don't beat your servant you beat your servants that's what and that's what mahaprabhu said ashle shava padratam pinastu mam krishna you accept me or beat me still i'll serve you slave means exploitation <coughs> so mahaprabhu gave the highest standard of devotional service krishna you exploit me you use and throw me even if you do this with me i'm going to serve you no problems that's the highest conception and prabhupad gives in one line in krishna book which obviously if we read if we think prabhupad books are repeating we're going to miss this this is the summation of mahaprabhu's philosophy if I, if krishna comes and gives you a proposal oh i told you in the class you chant 16 rounds you do everything you serve me nicely and then afterwards you go to hell what do you do <laughs> will you do this service who wants to do no you not do no nobody will choose that but mahaprabhu will his associates will do no problem finish to mam even if you reject me i am always your servant no problem that's what he gave he came to give us absolute sacrifice we don't expect anything from him and to such a devotee he will give himself he will, you can buy him if such kind of sentiment you have so this is one meaning from that any other thing you can see here i can give you 10 meanings in this statement i can see 10 things 10 layers of meanings there are at least 10 at least 10 there may be more yes yeah is true Oh, that's another question. Yeah, maybe we'll afterwards we can discuss. After after this, after this, you can ask this question, but it will divert the topic. So, anything else you can see in this statement? Yeah. So the word what? Simply. Why simply? What's that special? Really? Mm. Doesn't make really 
sense. Humility? Huh? It implies humility, simply. Yeah, that can be one thing, humility. Anything deeper you can see? This Prabhupada books are deep, very deep, very, very deep. They expect some reciprocation because we were saying since, since we are your maid servants and slaves, therefore, please accept us. So they expect some sort of response. Okay, good, good, yeah, that, that's one point, they expect a response. Why do they expect a response? Because of their sacrifice? No, but pure devotion is you don't expect any response. Well, they're depending on his uh, grace. Hmm. You can say that. But pure devotion is Krishna. If you even don't give me grace, don't give me grace, no problem. I'll keep on going. I don't expect anything. No expectation at all. No expectation of any kind. Hope against hope. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. I'm not denying that. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, maybe you are nearby. I need some... You, you have to go. Okay, fine. I'll tell. Gopis are saying... Please accept us by showing your beautiful lotus-like face. You know what's happening in this statement? They're saying you accept us by showing your beautiful-like face. That means when they want to see Krishna, it is not for their sense gratification. It is for evidence that that he has accepted his service. You see, if I serve somebody, then I expect that he should come and tell me I have accepted your service, no? That's where they want to see Krishna, so that their service is accepted by Him. Their whole focus is on service and not exactly on Krishna. See, that's, that's the point here. It's coming up in this point. So, if Krishna accepts our service, first thing He'll do is He'll reveal Himself to you. In the holy name. That's what He's going to do. And when He reveals, then we are convinced, okay, He's accepting our service. Or slowly He'll reveal as much as He accepts. See? So that's one meaning here. It's a very important statement and it, it forms a premise of um, a full chapter of, I, I mean to say, half of the teachings of Bhakti Siddhanta, this line. Half of the teachings of Bhakti Siddhanta rests on this line that we don't want to see Lord for our own sense gratification. We want to see Lord for His service. That's all. I was talking in the morning, Bharatan. So that's this line. This is another meaning you can you can take out of this. Uh, there are more meanings why I don't want to go in that. But what I'm going to imp- I want to impress is Prabhupada's statements look simple, but they're very deep. There are many layers of meaning. If you keep on, if, because Prabhupada is speaking from the, uh, actually Krishna is speaking through Prabhupada. It's not Prabhupada. So, uh, so that's genius. You know, fool is a person who makes simple thing complex, and genius is a person who makes complex things. Simple. That's Prabhupada. <laughs> That's why Prabhupada looks, look, Prabhupada books look simple, you know. Why it's comp- Prabhupada has made complex things simple and everything is there in these books because Prabhupada is genius. Prabhupada is genius. Uh, probably more than genius. So, yeah. Okay. How does Prabhupada translate Karma Yoga as in, in Gita? Bhakti Yoga, no? If you read Gita, Prabhupada translates Karma Yoga as Bhakti Yoga. Now many people, uh, many scholars, academic scholars, they criticize Prabhupada. Prabhupada is translating everything as devotional service. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, everything Bhakti Yoga. And what about Karma? Why is he doing like that? Is he, is he biased to devotional service? Is he repeating? He's like repeating always devotion? No. Prabhupada gives explanation to this point in, in his purport. Prabhupada gives here. Prabhupada gives, this is a purport to Bhagavad Gita. The quotation is not coming. Prabhupada says, Yajyas are directly aimed at particular demigods mentioned in Vedas. Indirectly, it is a practice of Krishna consciousness. Because when one masters the performance of Yajyas, one is sure to become Krishna consciousness. Karma Yoga is all to do with Yajyas. But Prabhupada translates Karma Yoga as Bhakti Yoga because Karma Yoga, because karma yoga is indirect practice of Krishna consciousness. And when it matures, it leads to Bhakti Yoga. So it's not an adjustment. It's a deep philosophy in this. That's why it seems Prabhupada is repeating, but it's not that. It's not repetition. Okay, so second argument is over. What about third argument? Prabhupada books are boring, many people say. But no, Prabhupada books have two special things, which is, you can, you can read all Shatsan you can read all books of Goswamis, but you'll not get this fire of preaching. 
There's no fear of preaching. Many people Radha Kund, they have read all Goswami's books, but they don't preach. If you read one small book of Prabhupada, and if you really read now, and if you really read it, I can bet you, you can just break the window, go out and shout, Krishna is supreme, you know, accept it. <laughs> you can't sit. If you read Prabhupada books, you can't sit. It's impossible. You can't sit. You have to be mad if you, have, if you don't preach reading Prabhupada books. You have to be crazy, that's all. You can't do that. Prabhupada is... It is fire of preaching. That's uh, 1978, January 1st to March 30. There's a letter. Prabhupada writes in the letter. Preaching is always difficult. You cannot take it easy. Preaching must be fight. Prabhupada was in this mood of fighting. Fighting with wrong concepts. Prabhupada was fighting with all wrong ideas. Prabhupada said, I am the first Acharya who has come in West who is opposing everything. No? Who opposes economic system and the social system, scientific system, everything he opposed. He was the first person. To, Prabhupada, for Prabhupada, Prabhupada preaching was fighting. Prabhupada said, you say fighting is easy. So Prabhupada books are not boring. They have fire. How can fire be boring? You, know, you have enthusiasm. Now th- you see this quote. <laughs> this is an interesting quote I got from letters of Prabhupada. This is from which? Okay, yeah. This is July 1st, 1970, the beginning of his con movement. You don't expect Prabhupada writing this at the beginning of his con movement. Prabhupada is writing this to an old gentleman in America. And what he's writing? He's writing to him, please accept my humble obeisances. This is Prabhupada writing to him. He's, he's saying, please accept my humble obeisances. I beg to acknowledge your receipt of your kind letter dated 24 June 1970. I am very glad to learn that your last responsibilities in family affairs are now discharged. This guy must be, must be around 60-70 years. Your two daughters are now married. Now in this ripe old age, you can devote yourself for spreading Krishna conscious movement all over the world. <laughs> Absolutely. When you would have read this letter, my God, what's happened? I was expecting Prabhupada to return. In this ripe old age, you go to Vrindavan and do your bhajan. But Prabhupada doesn't do that. And this is 1970. You can imagine this is not 1976. This is initial part of the movement, and Prabhupada's mood is always like that. So, 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 so I was when I read, I don't know what's happening, you know. So Prabhupada is always in that mood of he has always has fire, and that's what made people, you know, preach. He had this fire. <laughs> I don't know what happened to this person, but we have to <laughs> maybe do some research. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but. And Prabhupada is not saying devote yourself for spreading Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada is saying devote yourself. Spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. I mean, the Prabhupada would have said, now you're old, you can preach in Denver. And that's okay, you know. But that's not okay. So, the point is, uh, fifth tip is, please also read letters. Letters have something special in them. Just like small books are free flow, they're Prabhupada realizations. Letters are special because letters are instructions. Now, but letters, you have to be a little cautious because letters are according to time, place and contextual to a person. But, at the same time, letters have two portions. One is contextual, one is general instructions. It's always like that. No, it's just like in some letter, Mataji, when Mataji asked, Prabhupada, what should we do with Tulsi? Should we cut or not? With scissors? Prabhupada answered that. That's nothing to do with context. That's a general instruction. You do like this. So, you, when you read letters, you can take out general instructions. Contextual, you can leave. That's all. And more important in letters... Prabhupada's mood is very intense. Because he's speaking. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. In books, it's a formal language. It's not this, 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 this. So by letters, you can get this mood of Prabhupada and this fire, which you'll not get from books. You can get, but not as intense as from letters. So letters have the praise. That's why I quoted the first statement of Prabhupada. Prabhupada is saying, you should read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Nuta, and other books, tapes, everything. Because every book has its own place to give. They are giving us different things. Small books are giving realizations. Big books are giving uh, information and other purports. Letters are giving us the mood, the fire. That's special. So you have to read everything. Okay, Prabhupada also, Prabhupada books are not boring. Prabhupada redefines words. Prabhupada is the first Acharya who has redefined words. He has given different meanings to all those words which were traditionally defined in a different way. For example, what's a, what's a, what's, what do you mean by buddhi yoga? What's the literal translation of buddhi yoga? Buddhi means intelligence, yoga means 
linking. You link Krishna with intelligence. But Prabhupada redefines. This word is coming in the Dhami Buddhi Yogam Tam. Everybody knows that. Gita. Prabhupada writes in purport. Buddhi Yog is action in Krishna consciousness and that is the highest intelligence. Prabhupada switches on. Prabhupada takes Buddhi as action, not as intelligence. You see, and that makes sense because if you plan something and if you don't execute the plan, what's the use of your plan? You see, if you plan something and you don't execute, you're intelligent or fool? You're a fool. <laughs> you're making plans and seeing the sky. So execution is more important. That's why Prabhupada translates Buddhi Yoga as action in Krishna conscious, that is the highest intelligence. Prabhupada knew actually why he's redefining and that makes sense. That makes this word practical. Enthusiasm. What's the definition of enthusiasm? Anybody? How does Prabhupada define? In, uh, okay, I'll give you a hint. In his book, Nectar of Instruction, he defines enthusiasm. Utsaha Nishid Haryat. So Prabhupada defines in a different way. Prabhupada defines enthusiasm as practical action in Krishna consciousness. Not just action. Practical action. And it makes all the difference. This word practical. Because you can act do something, but it might not be practical, you know. Practical action brings results. Is it? Action doesn't bring result. You can do something, there's no result. But practical action brings results. So Prabhupada always asks his devotees, what is the result? No? What is the result? Prabhupada says, enthusiasm is action which is result-oriented. That's very important. Then you get enthusiasm. If your action is result-oriented, if it's not result-oriented, okay. Some preaching is going on here. Nice. That's okay. Everything is going on. No, what's the result? How many devotees you have made? What's, what's happening? You know, then you get enthusiasm. Rupa redefines. What's, what's the literal translation of bhava? Emotions. But Prabhupada doesn't define it as emotions. This word bhava is coming in 10th, it's coming many times, but in Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, 8th verse, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, Matta Sarvam Pravartate, Iti Matva Bhajante Maam, Buddha Bhav, Saman Vita. There if you read word to word meaning, Prabhupada defines Bhava as determination, and not emotion. So that's a sixth tip when you read Prabhupada books, please focus on word to word meaning. Prabhupada used to, sometimes Prabhupada used to think for three days to write the meaning of that word. He was thinking what to write. He defines, so word to word meaning are important. Generally we don't, Think, no? Shloka, word to word meaning, purport and over. We miss that, no, but Bhava Prabhupada defines as, translates as determination and it makes sense. Bhava is not just emotions. Suppose if you have a girlfriend and we say, I love you so much and then next day, for a month you don't meet her. Is that love? You don't meet her, you don't call her, nothing. So that's not love. Bhava is determination. When emotions become strong, you are determined to serve. Is it? When emotions are weak, you are not determined to serve. That's why Prabhupada translates Bhava as determination. That's a very beautiful word to word meaning. It makes all the difference. Prabhupada is giving practical shades to all meanings. Not, because if you read other Gita translation, they will translate Bhava as emotions. And we will be in the sky. And doing nothing for Krishna. So, that's why all the other editions of Gita, they didn't make pure devotee. Prabhupada books make devotees. Because Prabhupada is redefining everything. Prabhupada uh, redefines illusion. Prabhupada gives the meaning of illusion as misconception. We have read, no? Mis- misconceiving body. That's a very nice definition because no acharyas have defined illusion as misconception. Illusion as energy or something. But m- misconception. So my point is, please also focus on word to word meaning. That's very important. And that's why Prabhupada books are not boring. It is giving practical shades to words and a new meaning to the words, which Prabhupada gives from his own insight, from his own experience. Okay, so that argument is useless. Prabhupada books are boring. It's a nonsense argument. Okay, how many times you have heard this? Chaitanya's Mahaprabhu mission is Paravkar. Paravkar means... You know, Parafkar and compassion, 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 Parafkar. So, Mahaprabhu's mission is compassion. Okay, what do you think what Prabhupada will translate a compassion as? Okay, that's a quiz. What do you think? What's compassion? 
Okay. Yes, yes. Anything else you want to define further? Empathizing. Uh, okay. In a helpful way. Give yeah. people service. service. Okay, yeah, good. Perfect. What well, Prabhupada is mind-blowing. <laughs> he, he writes something else. <laughs> See, he writes here. This is from one of the letter. Prabhupada writes, Simply go on sincerely working for this movement. Nobody can defeat you. Take all strategic points, fighting with Maya, and become victorious. See Prabhupada's mood? He is he's in a war. Take all strategic points. We shall fight with Maya. It is a great declaration of fight with Maya. Not with Maya. We are... A fight is with demons. Maya is servant, maid servant of Krishna. She can withdraw by orders. But she cannot withdraw because people are demons. <laughs> so this European opposition, it's just missing. I'll just complete it. So this European opposition... So when Prabhupada was preaching, people were opposing, you know. Like people, countries, what's happening. European opposition, American opposition, is that the demons are now becoming agitated. And that's a good, because preaching means fighting. Prabhupada ends like that, it's not here. Compassion means fighting. That's Prabhupada's understanding. Compassion means fighting. And it makes sense. If, to, if you have to help somebody, you have to fight with wrong ideas to save him, no? How do you save a person? You have to save him from enemies, no? What Arjuna is doing? Arjuna is fighting in Bhagavad Gita. Is he fighting or is he compassionate? Arjuna was confused. He was thinking, Krishna, I'll not fight. It's a bloody war. I'll go back in forest, meditate. I'm a good person. I'm very decent. I'm compassionate. Krishna says, you fool. This fighting is compassion. Because you're saving many people by killing these foolish people. You see? It makes a difference. So Prabhupada said, fighting with wrong ideas and defeating them, that's compassion. Because ignorant people are getting confused. Is it? So compassion, Prabhupada translates compassion as fighting. So, when you're reading Prabhupada books, please keep in mind that, that Prabhupada has a mood. There's a statement and there's a mood. You have to take out the mood from that. And Prabhupada is redefining words by his own realizations. So, uh, are Prabhupada books repeating or boring? I don't think so. It's so interesting, no? You can't get bored by this. You can't get bored. Prabhupada books are highly systematic. Oh, what's happening? Anyway. <laughs> Something. Okay, people say Prabhupada books are not systematic, but Prabhupada books are highly systematic. It might seem they are not systematic because there are no points. There's no subheadings, headings, points, subpoints. It's just a paragraph. And small books are just going continuous. But no. Uh, for example, chapters of Bhagavad Gita are systematic. And Prabhupada gives the system of reading in his books himself. For example, chapters of Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, first verse perfect. Prabhupada writes, first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the knower of the body, the position by which he can understand the Supreme Lord are described. He gives. He gives a system how to read. He gives the middle six chapters uh, of Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Personality of God and relationship between individual soul, super soul in regard to devotional service are described. He gives a system how to read middle six chapters. How to read the last six chapters. He's giving a system. Third six chapters describe knowledge, renunciation, activities of material nature, transcendental nature and devotional service are described. If you read the statement properly, one chapter for one word. In the last six chapters, he described knowledge. This is 13th chapter. Nature enjoy consciousness. Is it? And also more of material nature. Two chapters. Renunciation. This is 15th chapter. Yoga of Supreme, where Krishna says, Asanga Shastri and Adhidena Chitva. By renunciation, you can get over this, this enjoying propensity and these modes. 16th chapter. Activities of material nature, divine and demoniac. 17th chapter, divisions of faith, that is transcendental nature. Faith is to be transcendental. And devotional service, 18th chapter. So nice, you know. It's systematic. If you link, it's systematic. Prabhupada is giving system. How to read chapters. Prabhupada is giving a theme of a chapter. This is from 7th chapter. Prabhupada says, seven, seven, We have many subjects being discussed in this chapter, 7th chapter. The man in distress, the inquisitive man, the man in want of material necessities, knowledge of Brahman, knowledge of Paramatma, liberation from birth and death disease, and worship of Supreme Lord. Seven things, seven type of people in seven chapter. In one statement. This is from Bhagavad Gita, purport, quotation is not coming. 
So there's a system. If you read Prabhupada's books, he's, he's, although he's not writing one, two, three, but he's providing a system to read his books. He is doing. He is aware of the fact that he's not putting headings, subheadings. He knows because time is short. He has to establish movement. But he's giving clues. Uh, sections. There are sections in Bhagavad Gita. If you want to know about last 3.36 to 3.40, Bhagavad Gita you read. That's a section. If you want to know about soul, super soul, 15 chapter. If you want to know about faith, 9 chapter, 11th verse, everything about faith. Everything about hearing, if you want to understand. 7 chapter, 1 verse. Pure devotee symptoms, 10 chapter, 9th verse. He is providing a themes to all to have a system to read. And then, mm, again, cotton. Anyway. And the last argument is no time. What's your anti argument for that? Somebody says, well, everything is okay, but I don't have time. <laughs> it's a good seminar. I don't have time. What do you tell? What's the answer? So it's, huh? Yeah? Yeah, okay. So, you know all this. Where there is well, there is way. Where there is well, there is way. So, that's what Prabhupada said. Self-realization. I shall never die. I shall live forever in my books. So, my request is, please read Prabhupada's books. They are perfect. Prabhupada is perfect. To read, understand, and then preach and inspire others to take and read Prabhupada's books and then propaganda. Prabhupada says, Krishna conscious propaganda. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you very much.